Welcome back to a quick video. This one's going to be sort of theoretical, and that's because I'm not that good at the mathematics involved, but I want to show you how to do it. Apologies for that. You can look up common mathematics for things uh, like we're about to see online. I'll put some resources in the video description. I would talk about the maths, but I'm going to get lost and, and make a mess. I'm trying to get better at maths. That's the one thing Prime doesn't know that well. So we're going to be covering gravity today. Uh, and so um, I came to Neos in 2019, one of the first things I wanted to do was play around with the gravity that was available. And from that, I made this map, and we're on this map here. This is called Moon Landing. It was published by me 891 days ago, so we're coming up in sort of a thousand days, which will sort of be a big milestone for this map. It isn't used that much, but when I created it, it was used quite a lot as it was sort of novel. Um, there have been, since uh, this map has been published, there's been other recreations of it that are more suitable for sort of hanging out. There's a, a recreation of the grid space, which is uh, using the same sort of spherical gravity. I think it's called sphere workspace or something like that. Uh, there's also one that has grass on it, like a grassy field uh, that you can walk around. So how does this work? So uh, yeah, I can just walk around and you'll see the uh, moon lander will disappear. I can jump and I'm attracted in terms of gravity uh, back down to the planet. This is all using Neos, and I was actually quite uh, amazed when I figured out how to do this in Neos. Thank you again for the team a long time ago who gave me help in figuring out how this works. And I want to show you how it works um, and provide the other opportunity that you can use uh, today to do it, as there, since this map was published, there have been nodes added. And I want to talk about the positive and negatives of both approaches. So I'll first show you how this mode works, and then I'll take you to an empty world, and I'll show you how the other uh, mode of doing it works, which uses a logic node. So let's jump into this one. You'll see below uh, are lots of links in the video description, including uh, chapters that jump around this video. So if you're interested in one part or the other, you can skip around. I'm just going to show you how to do it, uh, and then we'll uh, leave off and head on to greener pastures. Hopefully not moon dust and stuff like that. So I'm going to hop over into Smooth POV and talk you through how this one works. So we're going to grab a developer tooltip here, open up the inspector, and we're looking for the locomotion modules. This world is kind of old, so the locomotion modules are stored in a slot called user spawner. And in newer worlds, I believe they're stored in controllers. So just look for controllers, user spawner, it'll be in one of the two. And inside that is a folder called locomotion modules, or a slot called locomotion modules. Um, this is where the locomotion modules for a world exist. A little known fact about these is these actually get copied, in t including their contents to the user when the user respawns. So you'll see here inside locomotion modules, I have some logics. We'll unpack that in just a moment, but if we then look at me and we go into my locomotion modules, you'll see I also have that logics packed in there. And this is how this works. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and unpack this logics. I think it'll appear somewhere nearby. Uh, ah, there it is. And this just runs some logics and it uh, drives the gravity. So I'll show you how to get at that, and then we'll talk about the logic. So if you select walk, run, wave climbing, we scroll through till we find character controller. We can grab character controller, the logics tip. We can turn to MC place and hit secondary, and you'll see that we've got an interface card for it. And then all we do is we do various mathematics to drive this gravity property. And we use, uh, in this case, active user, which will get the user that's using the locomotion module to do the mathematics required. Um, in the middle here is the mathematics. Like I said, it's not my strong point, but it basically looks at the center of the sphere, which is right down beneath me in the sort of core of the moon, if you'd like, um, where I currently am, minuses those together, um, divides that by the distance between us to kind of sort of get a scale factor, and then rescales that up to be um, relevant to normal proportions of gravity. So gravity in other Neos worlds is 9.81, which uh, closely matches regular gravity on Earth, which is 9.81 meters per second. I should have lowered it for moon gravity, but I didn't. Like I said, I published this map 891 days ago and I knew a lot less. Um, so this sort of makes a sort of normalized vector. I'm not sure if that's the right terminology, like I said, and then it takes that normalization and times it by 9.81 to get the sort of way that I should fall body-wise to reach the, uh, the land below me. But the point here is that any mathematics can occur here to then drive this gravity. You could have upside down gravity. You just have to make it uh, negative 9.81, so everyone flew upwards. You can make it sideways gravity, whatever you would like. In another map, which you can take a look at in your spare time, called Gravity Playground by myself, you can actually see that in effect. Uh, you can launch multiple platforms from the starting planet and jump between them and that uses dynamic impulses to recontrol what the gravity value here is driven to. The benefits of this approach is that as it's driven, there aren't any impulses running. This is all sort of ran locally, and uh, it's quite modular and quite efficient. 
So you go, that's that methodology. Just pack this into the locomotion module and you're away. You can just drive the gravity. You can also drive any of the other properties of the locomotion system from here. I don't know what most of these do or how to use them to create certain effects. If you're interested, do let me know. Maybe I'll do a full tutorial on all of these once I've learned how they all work. I know that some of them are quite cool for doing things like ice or um, uh, surfing, if you remember surfing from the sort of TF2 or Source Engine days. I know someone's working on a surfing map finally, which I'm happy to see. I think they use some sort of traction or sliding force there. Don't really know how those work though. So there you go, that's how to drive the properties of some locomotion modules and have them apply. Useful for other things, not just gravity. We're now going to go ahead and head to uh, a world here that I've got set up. So this is just an empty grid space and I'll show you the other methodology for doing it. The other methodology for doing it involves some logic nodes. Right. There we go. So with our logics tip equipped, we're going to go ahead and find those locomotion nodes. Those are gravity nodes even. So opening up the node browser, we can go inside physics and you'll see the two nodes that are available for this are set character gravity and character gravity. These take a character controller. I believe I cover character controller in another video where I talk about uh, the velocity nodes. I'm not entirely sure if I have covered that one, come to think of it, I have done a lot of videos now, so I'll link in the description any videos that are related to the character controller with a character controller heading. Um, but just so that you're aware, you can find, uh, we can use as character controller here, uh, that's for colliders, we need find character controller. Find character controller here will take a slot or a user, find the character controller that's nearby and allow you to play around with it. So if we go back here, and we go to users and we plug in a local user we can then get uh, my gravity here so you'll see gravity negative 9.81 oh, i got the uh the scale wrong in the other word i apologize it's 9.81 down and then positive 9.81 is up so uh, when i talked about the upside down gravity it's actually uh, down is negative up is positive um, actual gravity will um, depend on sort of things like uh, relation to other units, if you're parented to anything, if you're on a character parenter, if you're upside down, if you're in an anchor, other things like that. Um, actual gravity will report a, uh, a more sort of real world um, part and then character gravity will report with all of the sort of things that you're parented into, uh, taking into consideration. I personally haven't messed with the character gravity node and I've mostly seen people just using set character gravity. If anyone comes up with an idea or a defined example where gravity is different from actual gravity, do let me know, I'll pin your comment. So character gravity gets the current gravity, set gravity will set the gravity. So what I'm gonna do here is pull out a node. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to positive 9.81 and you'll see what happens. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and create a landing spot for us above so I don't just fly off into uh, the uh, netherverse. So if I just position a cube, make it really big above me, and then I zap it with both the character control, uh, the character collider setter tip and the grabbable setter tip. So grabbable setter tip, now it's not movable. Character controller tip, and now I can walk on it when I then use this. You'll see that I'm now falling upside down and the ground's above me and I'm now on this cube that I just made. I'm going to have to fly down to this because I didn't bring the node with me, which is a kind of silly thing to do. So we'll do some upside down logics. I'm going to have to do that. Change this to oh, negative 9.81. And then uh, I missed. Cool, we'll just rebuild that setup up here. That makes sense to me. Sorry, playing with gravity is both disorientating and difficult if you don't remember to bring the logic setup with you, but I guess it's safer to have it uh, with me so we don't find character controller. Oh, gee, upside down logics is not fun. We have pulse and we need negative nine. That's 939.81. Okay. Oh, come on. There we go. And then we can pulse that and I'll fall back down. Sorry about that. Uh, it does show there some of the perils of using that. Uh, so there's the set character gravity node for you. I did want to talk about when you might use that, when you might not use that. Um, so I've seen two tips. Uh, there's a gravity setter tip. Uh, I believe Turk and Givel made that quite a while ago. Um, I think 
Gibber reskinned it from Turks Tip, or it might have been. I've also seen Vigilabo who made one, which was super cool as well. Um, sorry if I got any of those names correct, uh, incorrect. Again, it's been a long time since I've seen some gravity manipulation tech, but it's basically a tooltip where you shoot at uh, a surface and it calculates that surface and sets your gravity to that. So you shoot at a wall, it'll set your gravity there, shoot at the floor, it'll reset your gravity back to the floor. That's a great use case of it because it just does a single pulse and set it to, sets it to a static value, which is what I was just doing. I set it to the static value of up, and that's when we were on the platform above me. I set it to a static value of down, and now we're back down on the ground as per normal. Some things I've seen, though, is I've seen users using um, both the flow timer node and the flow update node to continually pulse the set gravity node here, to continually pulse that, right? I don't recommend doing that. Because if you do that, uh, what you're doing is causing a lot of pulses continually, um, and they usually have maths that is flowing into the set gravity node. If you're doing that, use the moon landing approach. Use the drive approach where you're driving that character controller, and then you can do much more fancy maths, and you won't have to constantly set off these pulses every few frames. Uh, that'll be a lot more optimal. There's a lot less pulses going on, and uh, you don't have a lot of timer and update nodes firing around the world. So there you go, that is the ways of driving gravity. I know that video was rough, it felt really rough, but I did want to just get the knowledge out there. Like I said, maths is not my strong point, particularly gravity-based maths, and there'll be a lot of links in the video description to cover how to uh, how to do this. It comes up a lot in video games. Uh, if you think about sort of things like uh, Outer Wilds is actually a good example. I actually confuse the Outer Wilds, the Outer Limits a lot, so I'm just double checking. Outer Wilds, yeah. Um, Outer Limits is another game. Um, I'll put links to both in the video description. They have this similar sort of gravity where you can fly between planets. They'll be using mathematics like this to make sure that like when you're on a certain planet, the gravity is there because you can fly between them. So if you ever wanted to do planets, Super Mario Galaxy, or just, you know, walk on the ceiling, now you've got the opportunity to do so. I will see you next time for a hopefully much less rough video. Bye-bye.